Hello Unreal Engine games designers and developers. Today we're going to stop vehicles colliding with each other when they spawn at the start of the game and make sure they spawn completely randomly on our landscape. Let's get straight to it. Well, I know I said last time that we'd be looking at either game engine sounds or game winning conditions this time, but it's been really bugging me the fact that the vehicle spawning at the start of the game has these limited start points and you get these collisions as you saw in the intro. So I really wanted to address that today and look at the uh, a possible way of spawning vehicles in completely random locations on the landscape. Uh, it'll also give me the opportunity to show you how to use blueprint function libraries to share common code uh, across the blueprints, so that'll be useful. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, having come to this video uh, for the first time, then follow the playlist in the description below and you can catch up on everything we've done so far on this desert driving game. So uh, let's get straight to it. Um, so as I said, I want to generate the or spawn the vehicle at the start of the game in a sort of a zone uh, around the desert. And this is very similar to what we did when we did the gate spawning and we set up a box and we spawned the gates within that boxed area. So if we open up the gate spawner, so go to the gate spawn on the level and edit it. And we had this function here that spawned a gate by getting a location in a box that we set up. It then traced down to the landscape and spawned the gate on the landscape from that box. So if you think about what we want to do with vehicle spawning at the start of the game, we want to do a very similar thing. We want to set up a box, um, then trace down to the landscape and spawn our vehicle in that place. So we're going to be using effectively the same um, logic from this point. I pass in a box and then once we found our landscape point, we'll pass out a landscape point where we can spawn our vehicle. So I could just copy and paste this into a new blueprint, but that's bad development practice. If you've got repeating code, you really ought to be thinking about putting that into a common function. And common functions in blueprints uh, can be stored in blueprint function libraries. So let's leave that open, the gate spawner, go back to our project and we'll set up a new folder at the top level, which I'm going to call common utilities. And anything that's useful in here for future games, we can migrate this folder into those games as well. And then right click and under blueprints, you can create a new blueprint function library. And I'm going to call this ppfl underscore landscape. So it's a function library with landscape functions in it. And open it up and there's nothing in here at the moment, just the signature for a new function. So let's call this function get random point on landscape. And in terms of inputs and outputs, we'll pass in a box collision zone, box collision object reference. So that'll be called spawn zone. And then out, output of this function will be a transform, which we'll call random landscape point. Now all we need to do is put the code in between, which we've already set up on the gate spawner. So switch back from your landscape function library to your gate spawner and copy everything from this get world location to the line trace for objects. So control C to copy, go over to your function library and paste it in here. So let's drag our start and endpoints out a bit. Drag these functions down 
and now let's connect the get random point on landscape to the line trace and then drag the line trace to the return. Now we just need to connect in our inputs and outputs. So the spawn zone that comes into this function will connect to the word, get word location and get the box extent and the output, the out location, um, we will drag to the landscape random landscape point. Now, there's only one other thing I want to do. I mean, this, this would work just as it, as it is, but the eagle-eyed among you will have probably realised that our gates were spawning in exactly the same orientation. So although we got a random point on the landscape, we didn't randomise the rotation in the z-axis. So let's put this in here, and that will mean that the gates and the vehicles will spawn in random rotations as well. So let's temporarily take this out this conversion, uh, drag out from the out hit location and type make transform. So that will make a transform object we can then pass in to the output. And as well as the location, we can also set rotation and scale. If you split the rotation into its x, y and z axes, we want to randomize the z as well so we get a random rotation. So right click in an empty space and do random float in range and anywhere between 0 and 360 degrees and we'll drag that into the Z axis. So as well as spawning or creating uh, an object or a point on the landscape randomly within that box zone it will also randomize the rotation of it as well so our gates and our vehicles will be in different configurations all right so that's the function library done compile and save now we can use this function in both our gate spawner and in the vehicle spawner which we have yet to create so go back to your gate spawner and what we can now do is we can delete all of these objects that we copied before. Select them all, delete, delete this transform here. Now, let's drag this over here. We can save a lot of space. Okay, and now we will drag out from our server spawn gate function and if you start typing get random, you've now got this get random point on landscape in our function library that we can use. And it expects a, a box as an input and it will then give us the random landscape point outside, as an output rather. So let's put our gate spawner in the spawn zone and then drag the random landscape point to our spawn transform. And that has greatly simplified this, uh, this function here, much more readable now. And it's given us the added benefit of this get random point on landscape that we can now use in our vehicle spawner and in any future projects as well. So let's compile and save that. And we ought to test this as well and just make sure that we haven't broken anything in the gate spawning. So go into your play mode. Um, let's... Uh, have a look around while well, there's a gate over there, so that looks pretty good to start off with. And let's go through the gate and have a look around now, and another gate spawn. So it seems to be working. So now I want to do the vehicle spawning. At the moment, what's happening is that we've put these player starts across the landscape. And I suppose there's nothing stopping you from putting lots and lots of player starts, but it's not truly random. You're, you're saying you want specific spawn points that can only be selected. And I'm, I want to replace this with a uh, completely random zone. So let's get rid of these player start points. And we'll create a new blueprint, like the gate spawner, we'll create a new blueprint for player spawning. So let's go into our player folder. That seems to me to be the best place to put this. And create a new blueprint class, actor, 
and we'll call this BP player spawner. Open this up and we want to add in a box collision um, component. This is very similar to the um, way we set up the gate spawner and let's call this player zone. And in terms of the size of this, uh, we'll, in the box extent over here, we'll set it up as, it's up to you, but I'm gonna keep it sort of within the middle-ish part of the desert. So I'm gonna do 10,000 by 10,000, and the, it doesn't really matter the Z axis, but let's put 1,000 like we did with the gate spawner. And that's pretty much all we need to do for this, compile and save. And now in terms of where we want to put the logic to spawn the um, player, uh, you, you could put it in here, but it's uh, a lot easier and it makes more sense, I believe, to put it in the player controller because the player controller really should be in charge of spawning the pawn or vehicle that it's in charge of. So let's come out to the project and open our player controller. And We've got a couple of sections in here already that, from previous things. Let's just drag our score handling section down a bit. And let's create a new custom event. We'll call it SVR for server, spawn, vehicle. And we want this to run on the server. When you're spawning new characters you want to uh, spawn them on the server and then they'll be replicated to uh, all of the other clients. Um, I haven't really spoken about this before but really for things that we absolutely have to be sure run in the game we ought to make them reliable. So if you go back to your add score and um, show score events you really ought to make those reliable as well. So go back and change those if you need to. Um, so service one vehicle and now we want to get that player zone um, in order to um, spawn the vehicle within that box. At the moment though we haven't actually put this player zone on the map so we ought to do that first. So let's get back to your map and drag your player spawner into the, um, the anywhere in the, in the map. And location-wise, our gate spawner we put dead center, so the player spawner will do the same. Zero in the X, zero in the Y, and we have to lift it up above the desert, similar to the gate spawner, because we're going to do the, the uh, line trace down to find the landscape. So to do that, just go to your left view and just drag it up so it's above the high points in the desert. Should be probably between sort of three and 4,000 um, on the Z axis. So go back to perspective view. Okay, and now we can see where that is. So at the moment, I've got my player spawner at 10,000 by 10,000. I've currently left my gate spawner, that's in this red box at 5,000. So that's in the middle, just for testing. Uh, when you finish the game, you can make that, I believe it was 45,000 by 45,000 to cover the whole desert. So now we have our player spawner in the level. Let's go back to the player controller. And the first thing we need to do to spawn the vehicle is get hold of that player uh, zone. So if you drag out from server spawn vehicle and do get actor. So get actor of class. We know there's only one in the level, so you don't have to do get actors and select our class as uh, BP player spawner. That will return the player spawner on the level. And within that player spawner, we know we've got a box collision called player zone. So drag out and type player zone, and you can do get player zone. That is our box collision that we set up within this blueprint. And we now have this wonderful new function that we can call where we can pass this um, zone in and it will pass a random point on the landscape out. So drag out of here 
and do get random point on landscape from our function library, connect it as the next executable, and that now gives us a random landscape point to spawn our vehicle. So drag out again and do spawn actor from class. The class you want to use is our BP pickup truck and collision handling. We talked about this, I think, in an earlier um, tutorial. Make sure you set this to try to just location, but always spawn. So you don't get the problem or the issue where vehicles won't spawn in the, uh, in the map. And now we can pass in our random landscape point as the spawn point or spawn transform point for this. Uh, we also ought to make the owner self, and that's the player controller. So th this player controller is the owner of this. And there's one last thing we need to do. We don't actually, this player controller isn't in control of this uh, pickup actor yet. The last thing we need to do is do possess. And possess um, effectively takes the controller and makes it the owner of this pickup truck for inputs and uh, and handling. So we can take the return value of the spawn and put this in the in pawn value. So we set up the function to spawn the vehicle. Now we need to call it at the beginning of the game. But before we do that, we need to make sure that the it doesn't try and spawn the vehicle automatically. So go back to your desert landscape uh, project, or sorry, desert project, and in the world settings, change the default pawn class and change it to none. And that will stop a um, pickup being spawned automatically at the start of the game. And now we just need to put something in the player controller startup that calls this spawn vehicle. So let's say after we've set up the widgets and we've initialized the score, let's put it in here. So last task in initialization, server spawn vehicle. And that should be all we need. Let's just comment this for neatness. Spawn vehicle at the start of game. And let's go into play. Well, good news is we still have two vehicles and you can see straight away that that rotation, random rotation we put in the um, get random landscape function has worked because I've got one vehicle pointing this way and one vehicle pointing sort of left, right. And because they're owned by the vehicle, uh, sorry, owned by the controller with the possess, we can still go into our input and there should be a gate around somewhere. There's a gate over there that I can go through. So everything else should work as normal. So it wasn't as long as normal to this tutorial, but I hope you found it interesting and informative and it gets rid of that uh, annoying issue with spawning vehicles on top of each other. So it's definitely worth a quick aside to do this. And then I promise you in the next one, we will look at engine sounds or the uh, winning game conditions. So I look forward to seeing you in the next one and bye for now.